Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 37, dated September the 11th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, The Maryland Constitution of 1851. That was the second of our state's four constitutions, okay? It came into effect on the 4th of July, 1851, and replaced our original state constitution of 1776. The Constitution of 1851 came into being during the Jacksonian era in American history, an era which emphasized removing the last legal impediments to virtually all white males voting, regardless of their class in society, as well as removing the insulation that public officials had from the voters, thus providing for public officials of all levels, as much as possible anyway, to be elected rather than appointed to office. And Maryland was not immune from these changes, okay? So in Jacksonian Maryland, the Jacksonian Constitution of 1851 reflected that. Let's point out some interesting highlights of it, some of which you're probably quite familiar with already. So let's start here. Under the Constitution of 1851, the Office of Comptroller of Maryland was established. The Comptroller was to be an independently elected official responsible for being the state's fiscal watchdog, overseeing revenue collection, okay? An office which remains a very powerful one in Maryland to this day. Next, the Office of Chancellor of Maryland was abolished once and for all. If you're not familiar with what a chancellor was, a chancellor, in our case, the chancellor of Maryland, was a ranking judicial officer responsible for disposing of equity cases. Equity cases were filed by individuals in dispute who could either not find a remedy in the law courts or the remedy that was available uh, in the law courts was insufficient for their unique problem. And thus equity courts gave them a very case-tailored solution to their dispute. And the judicial officers responsible for disposing of equity cases were known as chancellors, okay? The high chancellor of Maryland was a very powerful official from the colonial era all the way until the complete and total elimination of the office in 1854, okay? So the office of chancellor of Maryland was abolished, all right, as law and equity were merged together and the law courts assumed the equity jurisdiction, all right? Number three, all officials in Maryland, virtually statewide, okay, as well as local, went from being appointed by the governor to being elected by the voters, okay? So that included, but almost certainly was not limited to judges, the attorney general, clerks of court, sheriffs, registers of wills, and so forth and so on, the whole lot of them, all right? They went from being totally unaccountable to the voters to being completely accountable to the voters, as all of these officials would now need to stand for election to retain, to obtain and retain their offices, okay? Number four, we see the separation of Baltimore City from Baltimore County. Indeed, in the Constitution of 1851, the divorce between Baltimore City and Baltimore County was finalized. And from that point forward, Baltimore City would be treated the same as an independent jurisdiction, the same format as Maryland's other counties of the day. Okay? So that's probably the most landmark thing that the 1851 Constitution should be remembered for, all right? That consti this Constitution, rather, did not affect status of slavery. It was maintained in the state, and it also maintained uh, limiting suffrage to white males only, all right? So the Constitution of 1851 was definitely a Jacksonian constitution in both spirit and effect, right? It did not last long, however, all right? As the Constitution of 1864 
which was ratified by the voters in the fall of that year, replaced the 1851 Constitution in both spirit and effect in a litany of different ways, which we will cover when we do the history bite on the Maryland Constitution of 1864. So to recap real quick on the major changes of the 1851 Maryland Constitution, all right, we see established the Independent Office of Comptroller of Maryland, okay, the abolition of the Office of Chancellor of Maryland, total reorganization of how state and local officials were chosen. They went from being appointed by the governor to being, el to being elected by the voters. And we see Baltimore City and Baltimore County separated from one another, each being an independent jurisdiction. Okay? And so the Jacksonian 1851 Constitution was replaced in the fall of 1864 by Maryland's third Constitution, the Constitution of 1864. That will be the next history bite. So follow along as we move on to that one at a later time. I thank you so much for listening to this. Your support is appreciated as always. Continue to listen to these history bites. Enjoy your day. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you at the next one. Take care.